finish. All right, and we're live. Awesome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Usually we do these in the morning, but I think with most of us in lockdown, the afternoon's not too shabby. And That's I good. have the incredible, beautiful mm -hmm. Mandy Jeffrey with me, and she is an award-winning therapist. Um, she's a brow artist and she's also a cosmetic tattooist with over 25 years experience. And as we were discussing before we got on live, she understands the hustle. She understands what it's like to be on the other end. So hello and welcome. Mary. Hi, Lashana, how are you? I'm great. Oh, it's rainy Good. in Melbourne. We finally got some freedoms and it decides to rain. Of course it does. Of course. <laughs> the way that it goes. Yep. Yeah, we're all overcast and cold today here as well yeah. and it's like it's supposed to be a big storm coming this afternoon I'm like awesome great yeah great. Yep. we're the Let's same we're like mail. yeah <laughs> send us an earthquake send us covid send us oh, how crazy <laughs> have you guys had it oh, i, I couldn't believe when the earthquake happened i'm like what the hell what trying, is going on <laughs> trying to eradicate us just <laughs> oh, it's just like come on mother nature like enough all right we've had enough <laughs> It's karma for being the most livable city for too long. <laughs> right? Because they're like, livable, let's like shake it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took it to way too literally. Too literally. Too literally. We just wanted martinis. We yeah. just wanted shaken martinis. That's all. We just wanted to brunch. <laughs> right. Totally. Now, you are uh, in possession of the amazing Fox Cosmetics. That's your biz. That's, that's um, my baby. <laughs> tell us a little bit about Fox Cosmetics. What is it? Yep. What do you guys do over there? Uh, so basically I um, have been a salon owner since 1999. <clears throat> we bought our first salon then, my mum and I. Um, she was high school teacher and that was sort of like her retirement plan was to be part of that. And um, so I was like 20 then. So I worked in salon for a really long time through the GFC, had staff, had all of that stuff, and then moved my business home. Uh, and then I brought in some international trainers to offer some sort of advanced training in lash extensions and brows because it wasn't really available here at that time. Like everything was overseas. There was no one in Australia doing these things. So um, there was a group of us that brought some international trainers out and that's when I sort of went, oh, there's like, it's not just me that sees the lacking in the industry and the lack of training as well. There was, well, there's basically no training back then for lash extensions. And I was taught by a, um, a staff member with brow tweezers. You know, we didn't have lights, no special glues, none of that. You know, it was all very, oh, it was awful. In hindsight, it was awful, but it was the best at the time, right? And we just had to do what we were doing. So I organised to bring some trainers out. I'm like, like, people are really just not being trained the best way and not knowing the laws around it all of importing products and lots of people bringing in products from overseas. And it's like, you can't actually do that. You need to be insured. You need to go through licensing. And that's sort of like, I can do this. I can teach. You know, my mum was a teacher. This should be in my blood, right? So I started teaching and um, I really fell in love because I've got really pathetic lashes and brows right and I had acne as a teenager that's sort of how I got into beauty and um I really fell in love with the process of doing Russian volume because of like the lashes looked so amazing and with the brows I was introduced to brow henna and it was like game changer for me because my brows were so sparse and I didn't want to get them tattooed because back then the only tattoo style was you know a pencil thin line that was it <laughs> and I'm like I don't want that because I've got you know, a sizable face. I don't want a little skinny eyebrow on there. So, um, so yeah, I just sort of started researching it, did my trainer certificate, started researching lots of different products and started importing my own in. And then, like, you probably noticed the industry went really crazy probably about five years ago. And there was, like, cowboys everywhere. And I was like, you know, members of the public really shouldn't be getting our professional products to use on themselves, you know, like... They're not trained to use it. They're not covered to use them. Like, and 
we have to protect our industry as best we can because people can do their own services. Everyone's used a box dye before and all that sort of stuff. And there's always going to be clients that will do their own services at home, especially with all these lockdowns. It's like, why are companies making it so easy for them? You know, like we have to protect our industry. Otherwise, who's going to come and see us? You know, so um, I've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about that. And I'm like, you know, people should be trained and they should be using professional only products. So I'm like, I'm just going to make my own. How hard can that be? Really hard. Um, (laughs) Really much harder than I expected. And uh, lots of hoops to jump through. So we ended up, you know, because I love tennis so much, we ended up going to India. My partner and my uncle, my uncle used to do a lot of imports and exports. So I was like, you can come along to hustle for me. And he lived in Malaysia at the time. I'm like, you know how to hustle properly, right? And so we took him along and we ended up like in the old growth fields of, you know, of the henna where it's actually grown and manufactured and got the whole story and the journey of it and how to use it properly. And it just sort of started from there. Like, this is what I want to do. And yeah, I took on, you know, like a a design and marketing team to help me get what was in my head out. Because I'm like, I don't want just professional, I want retail as well. That's easy to sell. I've had many different product lines over the years and some of them are just really hard to sell because they're ugly, right? You know, the packaging's ugly and it's like, how come in salon we don't have these options of beautiful products that clients, they want to buy it because the packaging looks good. We don't have a lot of that in the industry. And I'm like, okay, like I get what's in the product has to be more important than the packaging. But I'm like, we are dealing with brow pencils and, you know, pomades and butters and powders and stuff. I'm like, why can't we make it pretty? as well so I had this huge idea of what I wanted and thank goodness it all sort of came to fruition of what like I found the right people to do that branding for me it wasn't the best experience I wasted an obscene amount of money on it um and it was quite a rough little road that we we went down but I'm like I just want some I want something that I would want to buy and that was a little bit lively everything in the salon seemed to be you know white and blue or you know rose gold and white or black it was all very it's lovely but I'm like nothing sort of like pow bam and I'm a bit of a pow bam right so I'm like well I'll just I'll do it and see how people respond to it and people responded really well um and yeah just sort of took off from there which was great and as COVID struck we just sort of started branching out into the US and Canada markets COVID shut all of that down of course I still have distributors there but Obviously, I can't go there to do training. Like literally, um, one of my trainers who travels with me, Brent, we went to Canada and then the country got locked down two weeks later, I think, when we got back uh, with COVID and it was like, oh, okay, right, it'll be fine. You'll be able to travel again in six months. You know, I invested all this money into advertising for, you know, overseas training and it's like, we are shut down. Like, oh, okay, right. And, um, and yeah, I just sort of wanted to make something as well that was easy for, you know, a therapist to sell, whether they are, you know, mainly skin or if they mainly do brows or they mainly do lashes or they mainly do body waxing, something that gets the client's attention so they can start the conversation so you're not selling to them as well. Because I don't know, when I go into places and they do the hard sell, often I don't get the hard sell. Everyone seems to assume that I don't want to buy things. I'm like, I'll buy anything anyone recommends to me, Right but that's fine. But I'm like, it makes it a little bit easier if the packaging pops out that they go, what is that? Oh, can you show me? Can I play with it? And it's like, and then the product's just as good as the packaging. Like it's an easy sell. And then um, of course we had to pivot things, you know, pivot the word of 2020 uh, to change from being strictly, you know, salon only to then so many salons were closed down. You know, I still do a few clients, um, so I understand the struggle of them being, oh, I've got to do an opening order for this brand. I've got to do an opening order for this brand. What if it doesn't sell? It's like you don't want stuff sitting on the shelves. A lot of companies don't let you sell online, even if they sell online, uh, which I think is a little bit rough. I didn't start selling online with my own website until oh, mid-end of last year, and we still do have a whole page of, like, find your local brow artist and find your local retailer. So we're always referring back to their local salons anyway Uh, because I prefer people to go into salon and then get a treatment and then they can become a good client hopefully and not just an online shopper but 
COVID, of course, this year has changed everything again, where we don't know when we're going to open, we don't know when we're going to close. People have to sell online, you know, and something like makeup and brow products, there's no reason why you can't, sell, you can't really make a mistake with it, you know, other than choosing the wrong colour uh, for a client, which um, it is what it is, but it's never that bad with a brow product, you know. It's not like you're picking, you know, orange foundation for somebody of my colouring right that you can't mess it up too badly and um yeah so I sort of wanted to make which I started last year just with people who were already my stockers saying you know if you want to drop ship it and you want to sell the products to your clients without holding stock we can do that for you you know it's ten dollars shipping blah 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 and then when this year happened I was like I got rid of all the opening orders um and offered it to everybody you know, just going, if you want to be able to drop ship, you want to do lives, TikToks, all of those sort of things, and then be able to show, sell those products on Facebook and Instagram, go ahead, email me their details, and I'll ship it off for $5. So, um, so yeah, I tried to sort of make it as easy as I could, and like how could I actually help salons still be able to connect with their clients, and they're giving them advice without taking away from their service offering. So you're not offering a professional service or training them in that to do it at home which there is a lot of that out there of course anyway and people will do their own services at home but you're not losing anything by showing someone how to draw their eyebrows off like there's nothing to be lost there and there's no financial outlay either so I'm like I would like that so I'm like well we'll do it and we'll give it a whirl and just see how it goes and we've had a really good response to it and there's no pressure I'm not a very pressurized seller there's no you know monthly spends or anything like that because that's one of my bugbears is when people then go oh you've got to spend x amount of money a month and it's like I can't guarantee what I'm going to bring in you know some months I might bring in a lot some months I may not bring in much at all and to then sort of be um punished for not selling enough for a company I'm like oh that's a little harsh um so yeah I just sort of went well what, what, what do I want I'll make it it's fine we'll see we'll throw it at the wall and see what sticks and what works. So, so far it's working. And, um, and I think it gives people then an option as well to, you know, be able to contact uh, back with their clients and create content for them that they want to see that's not a high pressurised sell because you can pick up on that a mile away now when people are trying to sell to you for the sake of selling and trying to make a budget or those sort of things. Like this is a very easy way to do it in my opinion yeah so that's sort of how we all it all happened so it sort of like exploded and then COVID came in and then I'm like what have we got to do now I'm gonna yeah do something else because I don't want to leave the industry I love this industry and I love doing you know certain treatments on clients and um I'm like I don't want to leave it but I'm like I've got to do something else because when the salons are closed I'm closed too you know mm -hmm. I have yeah, and that's the thing with so many suppliers. It's like, yeah, especially with Sydney and Melbourne, you know, closed. It's like they're sort of half our clientele gone, you know, and it's like how can I help them and help myself at the same time? So it's both a win-win. So, um, yeah, this is what I decided I would give it a go and, you know, create some new online courses that we have very um, in-depth online courses so that people can upskill as well. Um yeah, because we can never have too much information either, you know. Mm -hmm. And everyone's got a different spin on things of how they how they like to do things and how they train. It's like, well, all the options are great, in my opinion. So, yeah. Yeah. You have a very similar story to, I think, if anyone listens to our podcast, our Facebook Lives, anything at all, most of the business owners out there, they've come into running a business or doing a business because they've seen a gap. Yes. It seems to be a big trend where they're like, there's a gap. I'm going to fill it. Yes, totally. <laughs> so yeah. It's so not uncommon going like, I see this here and I want to, you know, slot myself in there. I yep. want to see it for myself. And as you said, you've been in that position of being a business owner. Yeah. You're still currently a business owner. You've been on the floor. You know, you know how hard it is. You know how hard it currently is. And I think there is this myth oh. at the moment that, 
suppliers aren't suffering. No, you, they're still not getting the income and the business <laughs> that they usually do. So, you know, you've totally. been there and, and you can kind of empathise and sympathise with those that aren't operating at the moment, which is, totally. is fab. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I think going through the GFC as well was, um, you know, a lot of the young ones probably won't even know what that is when we had the global financial crisis. Like I had a salon with staff in the city, in Brisbane City, uh, we shared space with the hairdressing salon. I'd moved from my own shop on Queen Street to the hairdressing salon to reduce down my overheads because I'm like, oh, GFC is happening. And then I cut my days down so that my staff could still work. And I worked at a sunglass shop and I sold Tupperware to be able to cover all of my... I was a really good Tupperware lady. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And um, But I didn't make a lot of money. I've got a lot of Tupperware still now, you know, 15 years later. But... Um, you know, it's like, you've got to do what you've got to do. And the internet wasn't a thing then. No. There we was no so, so much yeah. on social media now. Oh, it didn't exist. Like we barely, you know, we had flip phones that you couldn't even take a photo on, you know, like you could send text messages of 144 characters and that was it. You know, no online bookings, like none of that. And it's like, how do you actually get more income in when salons didn't really even buy online? You know, we would call up our rep and place orders. There was no shopping at midnight to buy your stock. It was you had to go in there and get it. It's like the world's completely different now. But I understand that fear and the struggle of how am I going to make ends meet, you know. And, um, and you know, we had the option then, you know, like I closed up my city salon, got rid of my staff, moved home, did all of those things. It's like these lockdowns, though, people are out of options, you know, like there is no breaking of the lease because we're locked down. Landlords aren't letting you do it and stuff. It's like you've got to be able to make some money or, you know, close up for good. And it's just like that's like it breaks my heart when I see, you know, salons that I've known for such a long time that were like leaders when I was starting that I looked up to and was like, oh, they're gone. Like mm. they've had, they can't fight it anymore. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's heartbreaking, you know, because who's going to be the ones that, the new therapists look up to that go, oh, I want to have a salon like blah, blah, who does these amazing treatments. One day I'll be able to be like that. If they're all gone, like what, not what do you have to strive for, but it's like if the big fish are gone, it's like, well, who's providing any guidance on what, you know, what to offer and if it's just a free-for-all, you know, and these established businesses, if they're struggling, you know, how do people that just like they're just themselves, which is what I am, I'm just myself. Um, obviously with Fox and with Beauty Lab, I have family help and a VA, but like hands-on treatments are like, where do you go? If you can't, if you can't make money with your hands, what what can you do? And then to have staff on top, I couldn't even, I couldn't even yeah. imagine. Yeah, and the pressure. The point you made before of when you are stocking a product range, obviously retail is so important at the moment. Yeah. It is yeah. some people's only livelihoods at the moment and they're trying yeah. to support staff and do everything that they can for their team. And yeah. to have a product range where you don't have opening orders and you're mm -hmm. not required to sell a certain amount, I thought that was such a fabulous point you made because, I mean, even yeah. I can go back to when I was on the tools and on the floor and it was like, well, we didn't we didn't sell X amount. So now we can't yeah. order X amount or there was yeah. always this back and forth. And I think Horrible. now having that shift and having that, that hindsight to go, you know what, it's, it's difficult at the moment. Let's just make it universal for everyone. Everyone yeah. can have no minimum orders um, yeah. and, and make sure that you're supporting them the best way you know how. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Um, and it is like it is hard as a smaller business to compete with the big guns that have got a marketing department, that they have their in-house graphic designer, they have all these things. I'm like, oh, I'm just doing the best I can on Canva, but I'm giving it a red hot go. Right? <laughs> that, um, you know, it is, it is very hard to compete with them and they've got huge marketing bu budgets and stuff. I'm like, well, again, can just do what I can to, to help people out because I can't be the only one that finds like having to do minimum orders and like, back when I started, I remember our first opening order was like $14,000 with our skincare brand. So, you know, the opening orders now are, they're, they're nothing compared to what we had to pay. 
and but I'm still like this is a really hard time for, for most businesses so especially for something that is an easy purchase you know cosmetics makeup and things that are an easy purchase for people you don't have to you know really check ingredients to go oh like is that going to be too stimulating for them? Oh, there's too much niacinamide or oh, there's vitamin A in that. She's not ready for that. It's like everyone can use an eyebrow pencil, yeah. you know, everyone can use a lipstick, like within reason, of course, if they've got allergies, but they're a very easy sell. You know, they're all under the, you know, most makeup's under $70. And it's like, that's an easy sell. And if you make 100% with no financial outlay, I'm like, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, we're continuing to grow Fox, um, you know, we're bringing out a BB cream. I'm working on a, like a, not a basic skincare line, but, you know, a user-friendly skincare line that's not as, you know, it's not cosmetical. It's not, you know, anything like that, where it is easier for people to be able to recommend it and sell it in their online stores because the chance of something going wrong is very slim because it doesn't have that high percentage of actives in it where you've got to, really babysit that client but it's much better than you know i don't know knives or something like you know like yeah that's like for sure buy from the shops without worrying about it's like it's that next step up but it's not up to the we have to watch your skin to make sure you've got to come in every week for us to be able to see what's happening it's not that level but it's not but i'm still working on it that's in the that's next year's but um <laughs> but i'm like just what else can i do that could yeah. help people out you know and um, especially how segregated our industry is, you know, I'm obviously more in depth in like the lash and brow world. Uh, we've done conferences and all that sort of stuff and organised that before. And, um, you know, a lot of the, the techs that, you know, they only do lashes and brows, they're not skin trained. You know, their training generally, mine does, but a lot of training does not cover chemicals, does not cover skin, does not cover what's going to happen when you put this product and they're using this product and what's going to happen to their skin or their hair, it's just, it's not covered because the trainers are often, you know, not beauty therapists that have mm. that training as well. So it's like there's that in between where people are getting their lashes and brows done somewhere and they want skincare or they want makeup, but they don't go to a beauty therapist. It's like, well, now you can sell it to them. They've got to buy it from somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. So they might as well buy it from you, you know? Um, yeah. So I, and, and they're an easy sell. Anything that's under 50 bucks is like easy. That's what people spend on coffee a week, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. I know for me, like I'm not a huge makeup wearer. I mean, I've got me a neither. decent yeah. amount on today, um, yeah. but I am one of those people that will scroll through TikTok or go mm -hmm. onto YouTube and watch the makeup videos, even though oh. I'm not a makeup wearer. I know. And I buy tons of it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have like a drawer full of makeup that I'm like, I haven't used, like that's probably 20 years old because I'm so easy to sell to, right? I'm just yeah. like, yeah, give it to me. I'll buy it. Um, <laughs> anyone that does it, I'm just like, yeah, what can I buy? What can I, that smells amazing. Or that feels great. I want to buy it. But yeah, I do the same thing watching like Bailey Sarian. Yes. Murder Mystery Done. Makeup Mondays. Hello, <laughs> I am there. I'm Absolutely. looking for that. And they're not hard sells, as you said, no. you know, these are people using the product, loving the product. And, yep. you know, just because one influencer or whoever it might be is talking about, you know, X brow pencil, yeah, it doesn't mean that that client's not, you know, looking for any brow pencil. Like they're any not, brow pencil. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go straight with the Charlotte Tilbury or, you know, whatever that influencer is using. They're going to the makeup, you know, to the makeup stand in your salon and going, that's yep. not pretty packaging. That's an eyebrow pencil. I want to use an eyebrow pencil. I'll use that. That's it. I'll use it. Done. Yeah. <laughs> or even like when we do our trainings, obviously I haven't been able to do any face-to-face. -face. I've got elderly parents, so I'm like, I'm not doing any group training because I'm just not risking it. So I only do one-on-one. -on -one, but one of the big things that we teach is like, you know, the complimentary demonstration. You do their brows fill in one brow, conceal it, do the works, let them watch you do it so they can see the difference. You're not selling anything. You're just like, hey, I'm going to show you how to do this at home so you can recreate it. They may have those products at home and like not buy anything from you, but you've showed them a skill. So hopefully next time they come in or when they run out of that brow pencil, they go onto your website or your Instagram or whatever and they buy yours because hopefully your clients like you and want to support you. I know that all of my clients are just like, 
what what can we do to support you you know what can I buy today to help you through this and I'm like thank you I love you so (laughs) so very much you're like thank you and most clients well hopefully are like that you know and even if they're not you've taught them something that they won't be able to probably recreate with to the same level with the products you know so it's like if they struggle you go well maybe it's your brow pencil maybe just buy buy this one you know like you've had your brows done today even take five dollars off it or something you know just to go just to get them over the edge (laughs) yeah you know or um yeah something you know like that so that you're not doing a hard sell you're just sharing your knowledge not too much of it of course and um and they get to make that informed decision themselves then of what they want to purchase and most people will just buy it they're like oh okay yep I'll buy that no problem you know and a lot of people haven't been financially impacted like a lot of our clients are not financially impacted by this whole process but we are you know and I think I do the same thing. Uh, We become too empathetic and we assume that our clients are struggling like we are. A lot of them aren't. A lot of them have less costs because now they're not buying that coffee every day. They're not then buying the donut with the coffee. They're not having to travel to work. Work's paying for their internet. They don't have to, you know, buy new clothes because they can wear their tracky dacks. So they have more. They're not going overseas. Those big holidays, you know, the $20,000 a year holiday that people went on is gone so I was like well why don't they spend a bit more with you you know and no one wants to find a new hairdresser or beauty therapist or doctor or any of those things like you want to have your people stay in business and I think most clients would be like that as well you know if my hairdresser was like oh time's really tough they're like sell me whatever you need to sell me do whatever you need yes do the extra treatment like don't even worry about it you know so yeah and who doesn't want their brows to look good on zoom really precisely (laughs) well that's the other thing is that so much work is being done online um you know people are spending more money on makeup because the screens mess everything up you don't don't look quite as good on screen as you do unless you've got filters on as you do in real life and so people are spending more money on getting and brows are huge like they are ridiculously huge they're bigger than I ever thought they would be and some of them are like bigger than I ever thought they would be but um you know it's like you tap into it you know yeah. some clients will never want to see you for that but they may want to do their stuff at home it's like having it to offer like if you don't have it you can't sell it so yeah, yeah. absolutely hmm. and look brows and lashes are so big at the moment because of how much they change the face even when I was oh. working with cosmetic doctors the one like cosmetic thing that we did was brows and lashes because it changes the face you know even with the brow lamination now it lifts the face completely it's amazing and that's when you get somebody that (laughs) yeah because we can manipulate things so much to create and it's all you know it's what I always say in the trainings and like we are illusionists We are creating Mm -hmm. the illusion of symmetry on someone's face because none of us are symmetrical. We're all lopsided um, and we're creating that illusion that we're symmetrical and we can do it so easily with lash extensions and brows that we can fix these things up to a degree. Obviously, if somebody's like really messed up, there's not a lot we, you know, we can't make things perfect, but, um, you know, we can illusion you know get rid of their hooded lids all of that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. through lash extensions and it's like that's just it's crazy but it's like that's that's what it is you know and we can create that change for somebody without them having to get surgery you know fillers botox all of those things they don't need to go down that road we can actually manipulate it through very simple treatments that we do so Mm -hmm. um even when things open back up like i couldn't imagine how busy people are going to be once things are actually happening again but there's going to be that opportunity to sort of re-educate our clients as well to go you know this is what we can do now these are the skills that I picked up over over lockdown let me have a play let me practice you know this new mapping technique or let me play with this new brow pencil on you most clients are going to be really happy to do that with you as well and then that leads to an easy sale too so it's yeah win, it's win. a win 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 it's always <laughs> always about the win-win right it's like yeah your clients have to your clients have to get something and you have to get something out of it otherwise it's not 
you know, that equal sort of relationship where, yeah, there has to be like a win on both sides to keep people coming back, you know, yeah. and um, and if somebody doesn't feel like they're, you know, being heard and stuff, and it's the same as like with any of our relationships, if your clients don't feel that you're listening to them or if your clients aren't listening to you, which we've all been there with clients that don't listen to us, it doesn't feel, it doesn't fit, you know, it doesn't mesh. And I think this is as well as a perfect opportunity to maybe get rid of those clients that don't mesh so that you can have room for people that do respect your knowledge and your experience. Because I think, you know, I know personally from experience, the longer I'm in this industry, the more it sort of upsets me that someone doesn't like respect what I'm saying. And it's like, I don't want clients that don't respect my time or the training I've done. I don't, I don't need that anymore. You know, that money is not yeah. good enough because they make me feel bad about myself. And same if a client's coming to somebody who doesn't make them feel good about themselves, they're not going to keep coming back. So, you know, if you tell a client their lashes are dirty for existence, you know, it's like you can't tell a client they're dirty. <laughs> you can't, you just, no. You can't, say, <laughs> you can't say their pores are dirty in a facial. Like you just, you don't say those things. There's other words that we use to get that message across without offending someone. I'm like, mm -mm, no, yeah. no. So, yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity to really have a, a good look at your business and what, who you want to come in and who do you want being part of your ecosystem of your business? Because if all of your clients are horrible, like, whew, that'd be hard to come back to work to as well when everything's so uncertain and to have people that just like completely rub you the wrong way. I'm like, that's no we don't have time for that anymore you know mm. I think everyone's been doing a good reassess of mm. their processes their protocols putting a nice line in the sand as to cancellation policies rescheduling policies I know I've spoken about it a lot um, and then on top of that other things that they want to bring in, you know, surprisingly mm. enough, we're seeing a huge influx of, I want to change my product range. I yes. want to start bringing in this because that partnership between, you know, business and distributor now, same yes. thing, you know, people are going, am I happy? Is there a relationship, you know, to be cultivated somewhere else? Am I getting yep. the results that I want? Because people do want to come back bigger, stronger, better than ever. And mm -hmm. part of that is reevaluating their entire business. People have had that time, which we don't usually get as beauty therapists. We usually no. public holidays working, weekend working, till 9 p.m. working. That's it. Now we've had the time to sit back and go, what do we do? Yeah. You know, what? how can we make it bigger? better yep. and you know working with people like yourself that understand it have been on the other end know how to prioritize what in the business and not do the hard sell because I think yeah. it's generational as well we don't like the hard yep. sell anymore I cringe no. when I get the hard sell oh. I've walked out of shops because I've gotten the hard sell before um, yep. we, we want to be drawn to a product and as you said at the start you know having pretty packaging but mm -hmm. having the product backed up, supported yes. by the distributor, having a distributor that understands all of that yeah. now is worth its weight in gold. gold. Yeah, <laughs> totally. That's it. It's um, It's been a very interesting, what, nearly two years, that's for sure, of seeing how things shift. And even, you know, when you've seen big distributors go under and stuff, I'm like, whoa, that's like, yeah. things are crazy. And it's like, and it's because you don't have a relationship with any of them, they get so big that, you know, the reps change all the time or they don't take the time to actually, you know, know what your business wants. And, like, sometimes you don't want anything from them, which was my big struggle. It's like, no, I don't need a rep to come in. Just send me an email with the information and the specials. I'll buy my own stuff because I've got a set clientele. I don't want new clients um, because I can't physically, you know, I've just had carpal tunnel surgery. So uh, I just had my neck fused last year and I'm like, I can't do new people unless they're a cosmetic tattoo that comes in once a year um that's 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 it so it's like I know what I'm going to order but if they're specials I'll take them like I don't need your reps time I don't need the freebies I don't need the sales incentives I don't want any of that I just want to be able to take care of my clients yeah. and and that was really difficult when I sort of 
shrunk my hands-on salon back down again that I'm like, please don't pressure me to sell more because that's not my focus either. I want to take care of my clients. That hour they're with me is their hour with me and I'm not going to spend it selling. You know, they're going to ask me if they want something, I have it for them. If they don't, if they want to buy something somewhere else, that's totally okay because I've priced myself that I'm totally okay earning that amount an hour. If they buy stuff, it's like awesome. It's the cream on top. If they don't, beautiful. I'm not going to treat them any differently. Just means I change their treatment a little bit because I can't do the peels or I can't do, you know, these other things on them. But I'm like, I see some places they're like, they're not using the home care. They don't get a facial. It's like, oh, I it's love a bit facials. harsh, isn't it? That's a, that's a little bit harsh, you know, yeah. or if they come in with makeup on and it's like, people work still, you know, like the clients to come after work and they've got to cleanse their face before they kind of like, Mm. my clients yeah. can come in with whatever they they can do whatever they want you know I've heard like, of people being turned down for hair removal not shaving and I'm like how are you not shaving your client for them like if they've missed three right. hairs who cares like, who cares I know like <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff you know it's like know. you don't need to worry about it because it will take care of itself anyway you know it's like but it's hard, of course, if you've got an owner that has a very particular way of doing things and you're an employee, of course, you've got to do exactly what they tell you to do. It's like there has to be that little bit of give and take back with um, your clients especially because they can be so fickle with things. And I have noticed, like, my clients are beautiful um, and they wouldn't want to be any other way because they wouldn't be a client anymore, <laughs> right? But I see, you know, because I sell online as well, the way that some people treat members of the service industry is absolutely hideous and I'm like I don't have time you, mm -mm, you're not a customer that's not that's not what we're doing here and there's no need for that rudeness I'm like imagine if they went to a salon yeah they're like no nope, we're not doing your IPL because you haven't you've missed three hairs on you know on your lab lab and we're not going to do it it's like just just do it like just just take care of it for them you know don't make a battle where there doesn't have to be a battle yeah, and it's give yeah. and take. Like you said, you wouldn't want mm. a client being disruptive to you. You don't want to be mm -hmm. disruptive to their time. To if yeah. anyone wants a good little Google, I can't remember her name, but there's a video circulating at the moment where a um, woman in the chair of a salon um, basically goes to elbow <laughs> the hairdresser. Oh. Um, and oh. the hairdresser is very calm and she escorts her out very, very gently. And wow. not that I, I want to use that as an example, but the hairdresser yeah. handles it so perfectly. Oh, wow. And she said, look, I'm a business. Mm. You can't treat people that way. I'm here yep. to do something for you. I'm pouring my heart out to you. You know, mm -hmm. I will absolutely be here to listen if you're frustrated, but you can't treat me like that. So today you're right. going to have to leave. Like her, the way she handles it is so I think beautiful. I've seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. She's just a shining example of how to keep your cool. Yeah. And to really put but that boundary in place. at the same time, place. you can understand. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you do need those boundaries set at the same time. Mm -hmm. You do want to respect your clients and respect their time, their concerns, their feelings and frustrations. So it is a, a give and take type industry. Totally. And don't be afraid to fire your clients. Oh, <laughs> I see yeah, that a, a lot on the beauty the community. Fear. Yeah. <laughs> the fear of saying to the someone fear like this. And the mm. how do I do it? <laughs> yep. Yeah, how do I get rid of them? It's like, oh. and it is hard. So especially when someone's been with you for a long time. And you've put up with things for a long time it can be very difficult then to make that but when you're coming back from lockdown you can yeah. you can do whatever you want if you know and if you know if something's gonna like a horrible thing to do but if you know like they're never gonna pay a deposit make them pay a deposit like if that's not your thing across the board like you have to pay a deposit no i'm not doing night appointments like i took away all night appointments and i still get people going oh what about 5 30 i'm like still night time I want to be home by five now. I've done yeah. nights and Saturdays since I was 14. I'm 42. Yeah. I'm tired of not having dinner at dinner time. You know, and I'm like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to work till 11 p.m. anymore, babes. You know, yeah. surely you can come in earlier, you know, and they can. It's just not as convenient. It's like, well, there's a hundred other places within a five-minute drive of me that you can go to. 
yeah. but I want you and it's like okay well this is the time I finish work so you need to be in by three o'clock for your brow touch up <laughs> and all of a sudden they can make it how bizarre I know you how know? weird how, how weird <laughs> But yeah, you're, you're absolutely right before it comes down to, and I think that the crux of it all is setting yourself a wage and a standard that you're comfortable mm-hmm. with so yep. that you can, you know, if you don't sell, it's fine. You're it's not fine. stressing. You're mm. not applying that pressure. Even unknowingly to your client, you might have that air of desperation behind you and you don't even know it, yes. you know having that and then also taking the pressure off with your distributors with being able to do things like drop shipping which cuts out the middleman being able to you know purchase what you need to purchase without over purchasing and you know it's not a minimum order all of those things will help you take the pressure off so that when you come back from lockdown you can just concentrate on what you should be concentrating on which is your clients that's that's totally it and like once you make that experience so special for them where they don't feel that pressure that it is that escape for them even if it is just you know a brow wax and tint for half an hour but that might be that only half an hour they're left alone in the month and to then have someone going oh your eyes are looking wrinkly today have you looked at our new eye cream that was like oh mate I just (laughs) want to lie here for half an hour and get you I just want to look I just want this to look better okay and but to have that constant you know pressure of oh you know putting the products out in front of them and oh you've got some you know they're coming for a brow wax and you talk about their chin breakout from their mask it's like oh thanks thanks (laughs) mate I was yeah I wasn't aware I had a pimple on my chin yeah I'm totally aware of it you know and just little things to you know that that could be enough to alienate a client and or make them not feel good about themselves like we should be making people feel they should feel better when they leave our presence than when they came in, you know, and it's not just the massage and the facial. It's the whole thing of your energy, their energy, and, you know, yeah, just making them feel like this is just their time, you know, and especially if you work one-on-one with people, like in a busier salon, that can be more difficult to do. But when you're working one-on-one, which a lot of people are doing now, it's like you can make that as special as you like. And then when people trust you, they're going to buy from you anyway. But if you sell them, they come in for their, you know, their brow wax and then you're like, oh, you need the butter, the pencil, you know, the brow tamer, the brush, you need all of this. And you convince them to buy all of that because there are those amazing salespeople that just like, I remember I worked when I did my training, I had to do, I trained with Ella Bachet. And we had to do on the floor training at David Jones. And some of those saleswomen at the other counters, they were just like, yes, yeah, like you take the disc out of their head of where they're at and you put your disc in and they just, and I'm like, how do you do that? And they're like, I don't know, but you just, you know, were just those magic people, you know, that could sell anything. But I'm like, do they then go home and go, oh my God, I just spent $500 on product yeah. and I went for a $30 <laughs> brow pencil which I've had happen to me before. I've gone for one, you know, concealer at a counter and come home with $400 worth of makeup going, I don't, I don't wear makeup every day. Like, why did I do that? And then the shame you feel, I'm like, oh, I would hate to ever make someone feel like that. You know, it's like the next manager, I can tell you that happens. (laughs) Yeah, right. Absolutely. I get the phone calls where I'm like, uh, or, you know, they'll come from another therapist and they'll see me and yep. I look at what they have and I go, you know what, you don't need anything today. Like you bought so much and they're like, oh, I actually mm. didn't want to buy that much last time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's really, it's a fine line to walk in between because you need to be able to recommend to them, you know, what they need to get the best outcome. But at the end of the day, it's 100% out up to them. And eventually, you know, eight out of 10 of them are going to buy from you, even if you don't do a sell. You know, they're going to end up being, my skin never feels as good after a facial. I can never get my brows right. And they're like, what can I buy from you that's going to help me get that back into my everyday? And it's like, and you've never had to sell to them at all. You know, you might make those big weekly sales, but you then don't need to look for new clients either. And new clients, as we know, are, difficult and expensive they're expensive to get in through the door you've got to do a lot of work to get them in you've got to do a lot of work when they're in there you can't have a bad day with a new client existing clients you can get away with not being on your a-game you know that you don't need to 
do the full performance every time and eventually they usually buy something from you anyway because everyone's got someone that wants to use something from a salon even if it's just they buy their Christmas gifts from you brilliant you know yeah, they don't buy absolutely. anything during the year but at Christmas they spend a thousand dollars love them yeah. is that better than a client <laughs> like hello I love you uh you know how is that better than a client that buys you know I don't know a twenty dollar product every month it's like don't discount the ones that don't buy stuff mm. because eventually they might or they may not and that's totally okay if you're making what you need to make an hour then it doesn't matter anyway Absolutely. if you price your services correctly none of it matters you know because you're getting yeah you're getting paid and the you know depending on of course what your your thing is that makes you feel appreciated um then you're appreciated as a therapist that's for me I like to feel appreciated you know and um and yeah, if you've priced your services properly, it's like, well, I want to do 120 an hour. Everything's 120 an hour. Boom, done. Yeah. Okay. They, they don't need to say thank you because they've already said it with their credit card, you know? Yeah. And the fact <laughs> that they rebook is like, they, they don't have to send me flowers. They don't need to give me gifts because they've already said thank you every single time they come in, you know? And I, and I give them the best that I can give them. So it's like, we don't need to do all of that stuff. So everyone runs their business differently though I totally get that but yeah. uh, you you and me are tarred with the same brush <laughs> I'm like if I've got an hour free after this appointment I'm almost giving that client the entire hour right <laughs> yeah. <What's his? laughs> yeah totally that's it it's like nothing's ever a problem no. you know just nothing for them should ever be a problem when they come in to see you it should just be you should be their little bit of joy in the day, not something that they're like, Fuck, what is she going to try and sell me this time? Yeah. Or who am I going to get this time? If you go to like the big salons, it's like, oh, I know that quite a few have that rule that people can't come back to the same person, that they're a client of the business. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm not going to have every girl in this salon wax my downstairs kitty. You know, it's just, it's yeah. not happening. And it's like, you know, you're just going to take care of them a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's all it's all experiences. And you it know, is. when it comes to products like yours, mm. just to kind of <laughs> jump back Sorry, into what yeah, you I'm do. Like... No, that's fine. <laughs> um, just to jump back into something mm. like cosmetics, you know, brow mm. pencils, things like that. And I mean, we've harped on about it before it, on the beauty page. We we've talked about it a lot. Retailing is number one, so important. Mm. But number two, it's creating that experience, you know, putting it on yeah. for them, dusting them with the makeup because you know they're going back to work, giving them an Precisely. option after they've had a face wax, you know, of home care that they can use that's going to yes. be safe for them. All of that actually ties into the experience. It's not just the treatment itself. It is no. what you offer on your shelves. It is what you offer as far as application and the services you add on to make it that little bit more special that's what's yes. going to separate you from the salon down the road it's not yeah. she does a microabrasion too so i'm going to bring in microabrasion so not how that works it doesn't it doesn't even matter if does somebody matter. offers the same thing right next door to you because you're going to do a completely different service Absolutely. to them you know absolutely so we're all for add-ons here don't discount yes. add-on add -on. that's it don't discount <laughs> Add something onto it. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Mandy, we will wrap up there. It has Perfect. been such an amazing pleasure to talk about everything and anything. I, I love I it. Ramble I ramble on. I'm sorry. No, you're like me. I always make jokes that you need syrup with my waffles. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, I can talk industry all day. To be honest, I just miss socialising. Right? I know. Yeah. I know we're I social know. people it's yes. it's tough out here it's hard it's really really hard yes totally that you don't have that that connection anymore to industry without all of our events and expos and all that stuff it's like oh you know oh, I, just sort of, I, I miss I miss people some people more than others but like it's like I miss the whole like the environment as well yeah, you know it's it sure. is it's tricky it's very tricky oh, yes. thank you so much for having me oh my and, absolute um, pleasure and yeah, thank, thank you. you for joining us like the feeling is so mutual awesome thank you so much I'm going to pop into um the the thingy in the, the beauty comments. page yes <laughs> that's it yeah a couple of people were asking about training and stuff and I've just Perfect. done like a 
a big brow course and stuff. So I'll pop the information in there if anyone wants any information or if they want info about the um, the drop shipping as well. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thank Mandy. you. See ya. Bye. Bye.